Hi kids, hope you're all doing well. I'm Mr. James. And I'm Miss Danielle. And because we're not able to meet for church this week, we're going to have our lesson here together online today. So we're so glad that you're joining us. That's right. You know what? We're praying for you all and we really hope that we can be together again soon. There's so much fear and worry and uncertainty going on right now. So our lesson today is going to be so important because we're going to explore what God says about all of those things. And we hope that you'll continue the discussion afterwards with your parents. Um, Miss Danielle, have you seen Freddy anywhere? You know what? He's just here, but let me go check. All right, great. Thank you so much. Hey, kids at home, are you ready for today's lesson? Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Are you guys ready for today's lesson? Yeah! Awesome. But first, you have to find Freddy. I haven't seen him anywhere. especially when you're plagued with worry and fear. But today, let's talk about what the Bible has to say about worry and trusting God, especially during trying times. Hmm. Okay, well, where do we start? Now, Freddie, did you know that the Bible uses the phrase, do not worry and do not be afraid, over a hundred times? Wow, so I guess it's a common problem, not just me? Yeah, we've all been fearful and afraid. But God tells us that we should have peace and trust in Him because He is in control and He will provide for us and take care of us. Let's check out Matthew 6 and see the promise that He has for the birds and the promises that He has for all of us. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Wow, I like how worry-free that bird was. Yeah. That's hard to do when I'm thinking about all the problems going on. But the verse says I shouldn't worry mm -hmm. and should trust that the way that God provides for even the birds of the field, He'll provide for me? You got it, Freddie. Let's read this verse in the Bible. It's Philippians 4, 6 through 7. It says, Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God. Freddie, how about you read the rest? Hmm. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Hmm. God also promises that he'll work all things out for good, even the hard thing. Oh, yes. Romans 8, 28. I'm getting it. I'm so excited about this, and I feel so much better. Hmm. I'm going to do what Philippians 4, 6 says, and stop worrying about all these things. And then spend time praying to God and presenting my request to Him. I already have more peace just thinking about these truths. I'm so proud of you, Freddie. Gotta go. Bye. Kids, can you say bye to Freddie? Bye. bye. 
Since Freddie is gone, I'm gonna need some helpers. So Lily and Julia, can you come up here and help us? Come up, you've been sitting there so quietly. Today, we're gonna be talking about the Battle of Jericho. Wait, can we tell the story? You sure can. It was finally time for the Israelites to enter the Promised Land with their new leader, Joshua. After wandering in the desert for 40 years, it was finally time. But there was one problem that stood before them, Jericho. It was surrounded by huge, strong, mighty walls. And the gates of Jericho were tightly shut. No one went in and no one went out. How could he possibly land the promised land? You'll see, Julia. Only by God's power. So God told Joshua to bridge a plan. It didn't sound like a battle plan. But God said oh, if the people obey him, he will be with them and deliver them. What did God tell them to do? God told them to march around the walls for seven days. And on the seventh day, to march around the walls seven times. And then blow their trumpets and make a lot of noise. That's it? Marching and making noise? That's it. You see, God was going to show them that it was by his mighty hand that they ran through the promised land. Not by then our strength. I wonder if the people were afraid and worried that the plan might not work. Well, remember our verse this month? God told his people in this verse, Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you to be strong and have good, good courage? Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. So what happened? Did God's plan work? On the seventh day, after marching around the wall seven times, they blew the trumpets and the people shouted. And? And the walls came tumbling down. Yay! God, the people live and God delivered them. Great job, girls. What an amazing story. We talked earlier about worry and fear. Well, the people didn't have to fear because God was with them. And the same mighty God who delivered them and made the walls fall tumbling down is the same mighty God who's with us and is walking with us every step of the way. Some of you guys may be asking yourself, does God really love me? You see, God made you wonderfully in his image and he knows everything about you. He even knows the number of hairs on your head or lack thereof. <laughs> and God does love you. He loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus for you. But you know what? We are all sinners. And we need to remember that sin is anything we think, say, or do that disobeys God. And the Bible is very clear that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that the punishment for our sin is separation from God forever. And that's the bad news. But thankfully, God loves us. And he sent his son Jesus to do something about it. God is a good and loving God. And because of that, that means he has to punish wrongdoing. So that's why he sent his son Jesus down to earth to pay the punishment for our sins. He died on a cross and three days later rose from the grave. He paid the price for all of our sins on the cross so that if we believe in him, we become part of God's family and will spend eternity in heaven with him. John 3.16 says, and kids, if you're not at home, say it with us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's great news, and even more reason why we should not be afraid. So now, girls, come on in here. We're going to review our verse for the month one more time before we leave. Joshua 1, 9. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God will be with you. Wherever you go. Joshua 1 9. Great job, everybody. Right, girls? Yeah. yeah. All right, Lily, can you pray for us? Dear God, thank you for creating this world and that we all live, live on it and we don't have to worry in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, everybody. See you next Woo. week. Bye. Bye. Bye.